Amen. You say, what was, was he, he singing? Well, Brother Jimmy's been taking Spanish, so he, why don't you get up and interpret for him? <laughs> right? We had, uh, uh, we have a uh, multicultural ministry here. Brother Jimmy was start, supposed to start a Hungarian ministry years ago and never could get him excited about doing it. He said he just couldn't find any. And uh, so we've, we've tra he's, he's been the understudy to Brother Jose in the Spanish ministry. So I appreciate Brother Jose. Good to have he and uh, Arlene Stephen back. And appreciate you praying for them and giving to help them get uh, out to uh, uh, see family during that difficult time. And continue to pray for them. Uh, I told uh, Jose... Uh, Brother Jimmy kind of cut him off up here, and I said, you don't have to take that from him. I said, you just came back from South Central, man. You got your swag back a little bit, <laughs> right? So uh, I sure appreciate these guys. I want you to turn to Psalms 42 uh, tonight, and uh, actually want to begin at uh, verse number 1. We're going to just go down to verse number 5, but I want to begin verse number 1, read the whole psalm. Now, again, you understand this, that uh, the Psalms are, are songs, and I find it interesting that as we look at this song, that it, it deals with uh, the heart, and you can see by uh, reading it that uh, it, it, it uses the term disquieted several times. The Bible said, as the heart panteth, in verse 1, after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and, and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night. You ever been there? While they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. And I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Notice this, Why art thou cast down? O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan uh, and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, and all thy waves and thy, the billow, thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto uh, God my rock. Notice this, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down? O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the, he the health of my countenance and my God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And I pray that it will bring comfort and help to us tonight. And that you'd get all the glory. And Lord, encourage us. We need it in these days. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I mentioned to you this morning I was going to do something a little different and, and try to be a help on this thought of dealing with depression. Now, uh, again, let me say, first of all, I'm not a medical doctor, so don't uh, come to me and say, well, my doctor said, because I'm not telling you right now. I'm just trying to give you help from the Word of God tonight. And, and I'd say this, that uh, years ago, I heard many preachers preach on the, the thought of depression and and several of them would say this, there should be no such thing as depression for the believer. And, and in theory, I agree with that, don't you? I mean, we are going to heaven. We, we are uh, trusting in a Savior uh, that uh, uh, has already won the battle. So in theory, uh, spiritually, we shouldn't go through that. But we're still in the flesh. And, and I, I see great men of God in the Bible that uh, have dealt with that. We again mentioned this morning Elijah. Uh, he had had a great victory and, and saw God do amazing things, yet he was, he was cast down. Here the psalmist talks about his soul being disquieted. And 
We, we look in the New Testament and we see John the Baptist who uh, uh, Jesus himself said uh, of man born to woman there's none greater than John the Baptist and even in that prison now again I can't say he was depressed I don't know but there was something going on with him where he was not encouraged in the Lord can we say amen there and so depression is a very real and serious issue that needs to be addressed uh, and it can lead uh, to feelings of despair and hopelessness and suicide and many other things and it can affect Christians as much as anyone else now again I was th theoretically brother Matt it shouldn't but we're still in this flesh, aren't we? And so I saw some statistics that 10% of adults in this country have some type of depressive disorder. That was probably before the pandemic. The number's probably higher now. 30% of women are reported to suffer from depression. And ladies, before you get in your mind that it's because you live with us men, I don't think that's probably the reason. It didn't say how many men suffer from it, so I guess, ladies, you don't cause us to be that way, right? It's some 15% uh, of people who are depressed will commit suicide. Depression is the leading cause of missing work, costing employers over $50 million in lost productivity. And watch this. Only 13% of people taking antidepressants report any improvement. Now, you know as well as I do, you go to the doctor and say, I, I feel depressed. First thing I'll do is throw you on some antidepressants. And people can't understand why it's not helping them. Can I say this? I, I, I hope you've understood. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. I'm saying what I've learned over the past years is when my doctor prescribes something for me, whatever it is, I question it. I'm just being honest. I'm not telling you not take medicine, okay? I'm not one of those guys. I'm saying that just because they push something on you, I ain't taking it. I remember I went to the doctor one time. I told him I was having some, uh, some pain here and uh, didn't do not one test. And in five minutes, she was writing a prescription. I said, what are you doing? She said, I want you to take this. And I said, what's it for? She said, for, for what's going on there. I said, you don't know what's going on in there. And she said, well, if it doesn't help, come back and we'll try something else. I said, no, ma'am, you can have this back. I'm not taking it. And a lot of times when you go and you say, I'm, I'm, I have anxiety or feelings of depression, whatever, first thing they do is they, they pull that thing out. And again, sometimes it's needed. So don't, don't if you're watching by way of internet, don't send me hate. Matt. Well, you can. It won't bother me either way. I'm not telling you not to. I'm saying we ought to dig a little deeper. Because everything is not chemical imbalance. Some, some things are spiritual. Amen. Some things are emotional. Some things we got to deal with. So depression is something that we need to deal with even among God's people. We, we ought to be the most uh, excited people there are. But listen, a lot of times we get our eyes off of God and get on things and it brings us down. And I understand too there's different levels of depression. I get that, okay? So before you come up to me after church and say, preach, you just don't understand. I'm not saying I do. I'm trying to help you. So I'd say three things tonight. Number one, we need to recognize the symptoms. Recognize the symptoms. Recognize the uh, symptoms. Uh, a lot of times it, it, it seems to uh, come in the feeling, form of uh, a feeling of helplessness. You ever get like that? You ever get like that? I get like that, right? Sometimes there's a lost desire to do anything. Sometimes, listen, I, I'm just like you. I don't want to get out of the bed and do anything either. There's sometimes I get up on Sunday morning, I don't want to come to church either. There's sometimes Wednesday night, I, I, I don't want to. There's sometimes I get up in the morning, I don't re, want to read my Bible. But I found this, uh, sometimes you just got to put one foot in front of the other and get in the Word of God and get in the prayer closet and understand that, listen, uh, the, devil's, the devil's the one doing this. Right. Yeah. Amen. I, I think it's as demonic. See, a lot of stuff we're, we're looking at in this day that we live in, is demonic demonic oppression and so there there's that feeling of helplessness where nothing uh, seems to, to go right feeling of inadequacy that lost desire to do anything you just you're you, you feel blah you ever get like that man I do I, I if we're honest I'd say we all do 
But a lot of times, see, we, we feel isolated. Like, well, the preacher probably doesn't go through this, and Brother Jose probably doesn't go through this, and the deacons don't. Sunday, these, these are good Christians, and that there's nobody else that feels helpless. Everybody else, man, they're, they're on fire for God, and they never feel like this. And, and so we need to recognize the symptoms. You know, a lot of times we, we want to wait till things get so bad that it's hard to fix before uh, we realize we need help in a lot of areas. And so when we feel helpless, we need to understand that's okay, that we serve a God that is called our helper. See, the devil's going to tell you all this stuff to keep you discouraged and depressed and demoralized and to keep you out of the battle. And if he can discourage you and defeat you, then you, guess what? What happens is, right, we end up, because we get like that, we end up taking instead of giving. We're, we're a sponge, but we're soaking up, right? We, we need the encouragement, and we need help from God, and we need the, somebody to listen to us. And, and there's nothing wrong with that at times. At some point in time, we got to turn the tables and say, okay, I need to be the one who encourages, and I need to be the one who listens, and I need to be the one who's giving and not always getting. When we get depressed, we, we take, don't we? Now, I don't, I don't mean that bad. I'm saying that it's, it's like we, we're, we're, we're empty. The best way I know to get filled up is not from words of people, but David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. And friend, may I say that when we feel helpless, we have help in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of times the symptoms of helplessness, and not only that, but hopelessness. We not only feel, help, we not only feel helpless, we feel hopeless, right? That, that things will not ever get better. I mean, it, it's easy. I remember, uh, I remember back in, and I told you this before, back in 2020, the fall of 2020, when, when uh, the spring, when when COVID hit, man, I I it didn't bother me, brother Brad. I was like, man, you know, I, I remember uh, speaking at uh, brother Blaylock's church. He had some pastors, and we did a live stream. And I remember those guys talking about things and and uh, how ministry was. And this was early on in COVID, right? And uh, they were talking about how difficult it was. And you know me, I, I guess a lot of times I go against the grain. I said, well, guys, here's my thought. This is what we've been training for, right? I, I mean, if you're, a, if you're a boxer, you don't go through all the training and then get the title fights and say, no, I don't want to mess with that. You're, you're training for this thing. But then it lingered on and lingered on and lingered on. Then you had the election. You had all the stuff flowing with that and all. I mean, it's... It's like everything was bad. Do you? you well, I'll say you remember that, but it ain't a whole lot better now, is it? It's just like everything was, and I, I was so consumed with it. Man, I'm talking about I was glued in. Every can you believe that? Can you believe this? Can you believe? And I, I felt my my spirit, my countenance getting dark. Just feeling like, man, there's why are we even doing anything? There's no hope. There's no help. Boy, I remember one. God said, turn the news off. I mean, what, what now? Click, right? Cut it down. It don't have to be 24-7. Cut it off. Take, take, some, take a break from it. Let, get in the Word of God and realize that, man, in the, in, at the end, we win. Sometimes we don't take the necessary steps, and so we feel helpless, and then we, things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're like, it's never going to get better, Right? Uh, the medical condition, never going to get better. Uh, this uh, spiritual condition, never going to get better. Our, our financial condition is never going to get better. Our, our, whatever it is, you feel it. The devil's saying, no, never get better. You're defeated. Before you know it, you start believing that, don't you? Yeah. Obstacles are too big. There is no sunshine, no better days. You met people like that? Remember, remember, remember that one... This was in the good old days when you could watch cartoons. Remember that? What was that one, that one character on Charlie Brown? When it had the cloud over him? That's the way some folks are, isn't it? 
No sunshine. Tomorrow's going to be worse. Than you don't ask them how they're doing, they'll tell you. You get in that realm long enough before you know it, man, you feel hopeless. Pessimism about just about everything, right? Nothing good. You say, man, God's still on the throne. Yeah, but you don't understand what I'm going through. If you stay like that too long, guess what? Then there's the humiliation. Man, the devil's got some devil's tricks. Got some tricks. And so, I didn't say humility. I said humiliation. In other words, the devil's telling you you're not good. Others may tell you you're not good. You know what? Other people can affect you too, by the way. We, we call it, in this day, we call it bullying, right? That's, we're, no bullying, no bullying. Well, when we were going to school, we just called it normal. People picked on you. And if they picked on you long enough, you slugged them in the face, and a lot of times it fixed the picking on you, right? But I do also understand this, that you keep telling somebody something long enough, They'll believe it. You tell your kids they're, they're, they're terrible and they're awful and they're, they're, they'll believe it. And the world's telling us as Christians we're crazy. They're telling us we're no good, that we're lunatics. Because look, look what you guys are doing. You're coming in on church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're praying to somebody you can't see. You're believing in a heaven that can't, can't prove exists. You're believing in a God that... You cannot see, touch, or, or, or smell. And so therefore, you, it's all a pipe dream. Uh, religion is something that just uh, is invented for people that are crazy so they don't go crazier. And the devil just continually tries to humiliate us through people and circumstance. Our own inadequacy. Before you know it, you may not be able to put your finger on it. But that's how you feel, helpless, hopeless, and humiliated. You may be here tonight, feel that way. Well, recognize it. See, before we can ever get better at anything, we gotta, we got to get honest. We said it this morning, right? Got to get honest. You don't, you don't have to get honest with me about it. you got to get honest with you. You can't blame everybody else. You just got to get some help tonight. So we got to recognize the symptoms. Number two, we got to determine the cause of it. Right? Right? I, I find it interesting. In verse 9, the psalmist says, I will say unto God. God well, that sounds good to me, right? I'm like, this, he's got it. But then in the same verse, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? One minute he's calling God his rock. The next breath he's saying, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? Why have you let my enemies overtake me? Is that how we get? I mean, we'll come to church on Sunday mornings. Man, praise God that was good service. And the choir was on and preaching helped me. And I just felt God's presence and I got help this morning. And before you even get back here tonight, something happened. And that's what happened here. I mean, I mean, in verse 4, he said, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. You ever get like that? Even going to church, you can't get help? Brother Tim, you know what we do a lot of times? We, we, we pinpoint it on other people. Can you believe Sister So-and-so was up there singing that song like she's something. She thinks she's so spiritual. But I heard that. It, it, bam. Right? The devil gets you distracted. Did you hear that? Did you see? Right? This guy was going to the house of God. Then he said, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. They were what we would probably consider good Christian folks that love to go to church and love God, but 
This guy's saying something's not right, right? Because in verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites uh, from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his love and kindness in the daytime and in the night his song. So he's saying all this stuff's going on, but I know, I know God's good. Sometimes we don't feel it though, do we? Sometimes you've got, you got to determine the cause of it. Because automatically, like I said, automatically you go to the doctor and say, I'm just feeling depressed. And they're going, they, they, they're going to find the cause of it. See, just because you're depressed doesn't necessarily mean the medication is going to fix the problem. So here it is. If I determine the cause, sometimes it's circumstances, isn't it? I mean, things that happen to us that are out of our control. Things you There's can't some control. Things there are things that happen to us that we cause. Some things that happen to you are your fault, by the way. There, there are things that they just pile up. You ever get like this? Now, you probably don't, but I, I know, I've got, a, I've got a, a, an outbuilding at my house. And at one time, Brother Harley, that outbuilding was perfect I had everything just right I mean where I wanted it bam 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 then life happened right I had a young man that lived in my house that liked to mess with stuff in that building but didn't always know that where you got it from it need to go back right then sometimes I'd take stuff out and I'd use it at the house instead of putting it back where I'd just kind of throw it on the workbench in there. And before you know it, you walk in there now, it looks like Hiroshima. And I know, Brother Johnny, in my mind, I'm like, i got to get in there and clean that up. But now it's 185 degrees in there, so I'm not going to do it now. And before long, it's going to be too cold to go down there, so I'm not going to do it now. And I know that when I do it, it's going to take a long time because there's a lot of stuff everywhere piled up. And i got to take each piece and put it in its proper place. And it's, you know why I won't do it, really? Because it's going to take a long time. I mean, if I, if I really wanted to do it, it didn't matter how hot or how cold, I'd just go down there and do it. But in my mind, I'm thinking if I start, then i got to take this piece and put it there which is going to lead me to take this piece and put it there. And before I know it, I'm going to have more time tied up into it than I really want to. What are you saying? Stuff piled up and piled up and piled up. And you walk in and it looks hopeless. Which makes me feel helpless. And if you came and saw it, it would humiliate me, right? And so... That's the way things happen in our life, isn't it? My, my financial problems, I need to get a handle on them. But I have this problem, this emotional problem, and this spiritual problem. And I've got too many problems I feel like I can't move. Right? I'm in a straitjacket to where I cannot break free because... There's just too much stuff to get done. You feel like that? I do sometimes. I do sometimes. I look at my to-do list, and I've got a stack of papers on my desk, and I look for things. I'm like, I need something to do quick. And I'm going, but if I look through these papers and find something to do quick, that means it's going to take time for me to find the thing that I need to do quick, which is going to take too much time. And so, here comes some more mail and on the stack. Here comes something I need on the stack, on the stack. Before you know it, then you just look at it overwhelmed, right? Circumstances are the same way. The devil 
The de- we all face them, by the way. The devil will keep too big, too big, can't do it. Things pile up, circumstances, listen, will happen, so don't let it depress you. If we took the time this, this evening and shared our life with each other, you'd probably find out some of the circumstances you're going through in your life. There's a lot of other people in this building that are going through them as well. So the cause can be circumstances. Sometimes the, the cause can be conditions. Sometimes physical problems. You know what? And I, please don't misunderstand me. I hope I don't. I, I, I hope you... I'm not trying to compare my little infirmity with some of what some of you have gone through. But just a few months ago, some of you know I had plantar fasciitis and somebody said, well, ain't no big deal. Well, I thought it was. Because I'm going to tell you what, I would wake up in the morning and I couldn't walk. And I'd sit at my desk and I'd get up and it felt like somebody was jabbing a knife up through my heel. And I'd walk up steps and it hurt and I'd walk down steps and I'd, anything I did, it, it was excruciating pain for me. Now some of you ladies are going, you ought to try having a baby. I don't want to have a baby. I'm glad God made where I can't have one, praise God, because I know I couldn't handle that pain. But I'll be honest with you, after a couple months, and I'm, I'm, my wife tell you I have a pretty high tolerance of pain. After a couple of months, I really, in my mind, I'm going, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want to go to the doctor. I didn't go to the doctor for two months. I'm like, I can, I can get over, you know. And by, the time, and by the time I went to the doctor, I said, I don't care if he told me he's got to reach in there with a knife and just rip it out of me. I'm ready. Again, I understand that's not what some of you have gone through. You've gone through much worse. And so I'm definitely not trying to put us on the same level. What I'm saying is sometimes... Physical problems can ache and linger and keep on until it just, you're like, it's never going to get better. I just want to, I want to walk. I want to have a normal life where something's not bothering me. Yeah? Sometimes mental conditions, right? And uh, anxiety or, or you know, just uh, there's so many different things. Sometimes they just linger and linger and linger and linger and linger and you're just going, I just want it to quit and I just want to get better and I want my mind to work normally and I want to think about good things but it seems like sometimes it's emotional. Seems like every time you try to love somebody, they kick you in the teeth. Time you share your heart with them, they rip it out of your body. It happens. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm just, I'm just trying to get real with you tonight. Sometimes just look, let's be, when I look at the general condition of the world, it depresses me. I mean, this world hates God. Our kids are being force fed garbage that used to only take place in the red light district. And it's becoming the norm. But sometimes even those conditions are caused by something deeper. And sometimes they're caused by sin. Sometimes we have unresolved sin. Listen, folks, and you, you can cut me off and say, no, nah, that ain't it, preacher. But if you get honest with God, some of you ha- are dealing with physical, mental, emotional issues because you've got sin in your life that you won't deal with. Not always. But we won't get honest with God. Sometimes the cause of our depression is conflict. My wife tell you, I don't my wife tell you, I don't I don't like conflict. I don't I despise it. I don't like it. And I just tell my kids now, I'm like, won't y'all just get along? I mean, just most of the stuff people argue about, it don't it doesn't matter. Can can we get real? 90%, 95%, 90%, 90, 95%, I'm going higher. I might go 99% of stuff where argue and take a stand about doesn't even matter. But we like the drama. And we like the conflict. And we like the contention. We want to be right. 
And I think we ought to be right biblically. I think we ought to be right doctrinally. But a lot of folks that are so strong on their convictions really don't show any love of Christ. I just know people, you do too, they thrive off drama. If something ain't going wrong in their life and they don't have conflict with somebody. And I think, I think the culture and society we live in is promoting more and more of that. And again, I'm not 100% anti-social media but it is it is it is permeating our families and our children and our fa- listen and, and it, ain't, it ain't just kids it's not just well Paul brother Paul and Miss Tammy ought to be dealing with teenagers about social media there's me grandma's grandpa's in here on it as kids right Does it not depress you? But we sure won't do away with it. We won't even take a sabbatical from it. Conditions. Conflict. And guess what? There is chemical imbalance. There is. I, I'm not, I'm, I said before, I'm not a doctor. I'm not anti but there are some people that do have a chemical imbalance. But I also say this. Statistics show, if you're honest, they're fewer than what we believe. It's, few, it's fewer than what you believe. Because you go to the doctor, first thing they do, you probably got a chemical imbalance. Well, did he ask you about your life? Did he ask you about the sin in your life? Did he ask you about your walk with God? Did he ask you about your spirit? No. See, that's their job. Let me fix this with this. Some stuff you, you do realize when this psalmist wrote this, they didn't have all the medicine we got now. You do know when Elijah went through what he went through, they didn't have the medicine we have now. So they had to have some way of dealing with what they're going through, didn't they? Gotten quieter. Then number three. How do we deal with depression? We've got to work a plan. plan. See, again, you can, you can identify it. You can identify the cause, and you can recognize the symptoms, but if we don't do anything about it, you, you'll stay where you are. You'll stay where you are. So how do we work a plan? Well, here's what I'd say. There's others, no doubt. You can come and say, well, okay. Well, here's three things. One, fellowship with the Lord. I just know this. The more time I spend with God, the more time I spend in my Bible, and the more time I spend in prayer, and the more time I encourage myself listen to good preaching, good singing, right? The more time I spend off of social media, the more time I spend in positive things, Hello? It sure helps, it sure helps me. You, it, it, when you get up in the morning, you, you get your, your Java. Instead of automatically pulling that phone out, why don't you pull your Bible out? I mean, really, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. I'm not, I'm not trying to be super spiritual on you. I'm just saying that the way we start our day, Affects a lot of how the rest of the day goes. And, and if you've had that seven, eight hour fast of social media because you're asleep and your mind, the first thing is saying, you got to go check and see what's going on in the world. Friend, I promise you this your day's starting off wrong. Spend time in God's Word. A closer walk with the Lord will fix a lot of our problems. Because here's the deal, Brother Jose, the reason we don't want to do that is the closer we get to God, we start seeing our inadequacies and also we see our sinfulness and we have to deal with it. And so it's a whole lot easier to avoid that and go over here with this. As we 
spend more time with God, it gives us confidence in Him. And we understand that in Him we have an overcoming power. I can do what? All things. Well, does that in, include just some things? Reckon that includes my attitude? Reckon it includes my, my health? Reckon it includes my mind? See, we won't hear that even in our independent King James Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm Bible believer. I believe the whole Word of God except that scripture. Or others we don't like, right? More time with Him, less time around the things that hurt us. Now don't, well, fellas, won't you listen to me? I'm going to say this, and I want to explain it, because I know how Baptist folk are. You'll hear part of it. Sometimes you have to remove things that cause you the problem. Now, don't you go home tonight, sir, tell your wife, I'm quitting my job because that's what depresses me. You might have bigger issues than that, like a frying pan to the side of your head. Preacher said, don't you put it on me, right? Don't you get rid of her dog because that, that, no, don't, I know how you folks are. Be like, you know, preacher said this, and this depresses me, so I'm just going to get rid of it. You better be careful. But you know what I'm talking about. There are some things you just gotta, you've got to cut out. Cut it out of your life. Ask God what needs to change. Seriously. We're all, we're all messed up mentally and emotionally. And we're going, i got to go to the doctor for this. i got to get help from here to here. First thing I do is spend time with God and say, okay, God, if you can fix it, I'll trust you and give you the glory for it. I'm going to start with you, not, for, not last, but first. I'm going to you first. Right? Am I, yeah? Second thing is this, uh, we, 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 have to, we have to believe in the foundation of Scripture. See, the, the Bible encourages us. As you read, because when you look at God's we're people, not, we're, we're not, people that go through storms. We mentioned it this morning. Uh, Jesus said we will have storms, right? right? They're coming. The foundation, we preached on the foundation this morning. The foundation has to be the rock. Well, if that's true, the Bible encourages me because I see, guess what? That Daniel went through stuff, Elijah went through stuff, David went through stuff, Solomon went through stuff, John the Baptist went through stuff, Paul went through stuff. Listen, again, every one of them had stuff in their life. And God got them through it and they served God till the end. The Bible can lead us away from the things that depress us. You say, oh, nobody loves me. For God so loved the world. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. Amen. See, the devil tells you all these lies. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. Casting all your care on him. Why? He careth for you. Now, what else you got? We don't spend time in the scripture. We don't spend time in prayer. We don't spend time in fellowship with God. Get things right with God and others and see if that doesn't affect you. See, some of this is the burden and the guilt and the conviction you're carrying with you is affecting you emotionally and physically and mentally and you're blaming it on things that you could fix. But see, you got this bitterness that is eating you up inside that you won't deal with. You got this unforgiveness that you won't that you won't deal with. You've got all this stuff eating you up. You're in, I just, I've got anxiety and I've got depression. I've got, you're, you're labeling all the stuff. The problem is you're not labeling the problem. Again, I know that's not every case. But I'm convinced of this. If God's people would get right with God and each other, it would take care of a lot of our issues. A lot of them. I didn't say all of them, but a lot of them. We have to 
have that foundation of the scripture. And then finally, functional help. Sometimes you, sometimes you do got to get counseling. But you know what I'd do? I'd find a Christian. I wouldn't go to some jack leg that advertised in the yellow pages. I don't know that I'd even go to one that my doctor recommended if, he's a, if he doesn't believe. Because you know what they're going to do? They're going to first give you secular solutions. Sometimes medication will help. But here's the problem, ready? This is probably going to stink. I believe I'd stay away from the medication that numbs you. Stay away from it. I just, I can't feel anything. That's how I want to be. Well, you know what else you can't feel? God when he's doing something to you. You get the place you don't, you have, you're just numb and you can't feel Kind of hard for God to speak to you, isn't it? And again, I'm not saying all medication's bad. I told you I wasn't a doctor, so don't give, leave out here and say my, my preacher's a quack or because I ain't a quack who ain't a doctor. And don't run out of here and go to your doctor and say I'm getting off everything, but I think I'd ask some questions. See, we stopped trusting God. We started trusting everything everybody says because they're an expert. You take most experts and a dollar, and you can get a cup of coffee somewhere. Cheap coffee. Not at the frou-frou places. One of the greatest things that we have is that thing right there. It may not solve all your problems. But brother, man, I've seen it take care of a lot of them. We got to deal with depression. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying Christians don't get depressed. Because we do. But I also think our first resource should be that way. Ask God to help. Let's stand together.